Raytheon has secured a U.S. Army contract to create wireless power beaming technology, which really is going to be advancing the battlefield energy distribution under the Department of Defense's operational energy strategy. Now, the system itself, as you can see here, aims to cut some pretty big logistical hurdles, eliminating reliance on fuel and batteries and reducing troop exposure to those risks, while also ensuring kind of that consistent energy delivery <coughs> to both crews. We've looked at this stuff before, I think. We have about a year ago. We talked about this. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it was anywhere near uh, to the level of. I, I think it was an idea back then. <laughs> it was so, like um, a, it was a it was a grid that was being laid out. I think I remember back then. Yeah, yeah, I remember a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. And so by bypassing some of these vulnerable centralized fuel depots that that they have, the technology is really is really going to enhance that operational efficiency. I, I'm excited for it. I love operational efficiency. So it's, it's fun to, it's fun to lean into that. And then it could also mm -hmm. zap some battlefield energy logistics in the future. Goodbye fuel convoys. Hello, efficient power beaming. Like I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> this is cool. Literally sending power through the air is something that we've always like said that you, it's not possible because you lose so much energy, you lose yeah. whatever the heat, et cetera. So like, this is like, this is as sci-fi as I think we've ever really gotten on the stuff that feels like it shouldn't be able to happen, but does. Yeah. So eliminating the need for fuel and, and batteries on the battlefield. I, I don't know. You, you, you mentioned how you want to reduce the troop exposure to risk. I think mm -hmm. one of those risks they have to consider is actually the power flowing through the air. Is that a risk to humans? What kind of studies yeah. there? No, Andrew doesn't care, but some of us do care about that. So I think maybe looking at those safety studies might be one of the most critical things they're going to have to do here because, you know, we know the fiasco was, was it Agent Orange back in Vietnam and how there's like all that kind of stuff from the government. I'm just saying you, you want to make sure this is safe. Yeah. Talking of Agent Orange, look at that T-shirt. Um Anyway, so coming... oh, okay, can't tell. Screen's too small. <laughs> Contrary to popular opinion, actually, I think the safety studies piece is fair, very fair. Um, you know, reliability and efficiency of energy transfer in, in real combat scenarios. Wow. So making sure the power beaming tech can deliver consistently interference free energy in a harsh and unpredictable battlefield condition if that tech fails it's game over that's the safety i'm talking about mm. less of the you know newt waves coming into your head yeah, and giving you an orange sweater i mean we're talking about serious issues if it doesn't deliver because game over you've got no power well it's we know that like cutting off the supplies is a very big battlefield strategy you know like cutting off the whether it was food for armies or the fuel needed to run stuff so that supply line is it can be cut off maybe there's a future system of warfare where you know that you're power beaming power down and you use some other kind of beams to interrupt that and make sure that that functionality is messed up so you're you're right we've got the how is this working with humans but also what makes sure that this is a continuous non-interrupted kind of source that can't get messed up by by other kind of interference yeah here's my quote of the week with great oh power comes great responsibility oh, so a, you do watch movies sometimes yeah occasionally, occasionally. or read comic books maybe yeah 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 <laughs> but this isn't sci-fi this is combat reality that that's the, the real thing so if raytheon's wireless power flops due to environmental factors or interference for that matter troops could be left without essential power mid-battle that to me is the biggest risk well let, let's dive in as to how do we make sure that's not the case you know how do you make sure that this is something that isn't just going to mess up due to interference with and leaving the troops stranded without power so okay. obviously one of the biggest requirements here is it needs to work i think we can we can start with that's yeah. a good requirement there are other requirements as well which are what conditions yeah. what environments is this working through does does weather affect it does solar fares do radio waves someone microwaving uh you know tv dinner i don't know uh what, what do we do to make sure this stuff is working against those yeah, I do requirements gathering. You're right. It's essentially, I mean, if, that if this can take a plane down, apparently, that, yeah, they, that, you know, that's unfounded now, right? <laughs> <laughs>
you know so you're right like, requirements it, gathering design change design and change I, I agree and then you've got your simulation piece you've got to get your simulation running that's the first thing i would do is you've got all that done simulate simulate run comprehensive field sims for power delivery and reliability in these diverse terrains never mind conditions mm. um that that's that great that's you were going to say area. something intelligent yeah, I, well, I was just going to say, well, I don't know if it's intelligent, but I have a hard enough time getting my, <laughs> I have a hard enough time getting my phone to charge. I have to place it specifically on the wireless charger to get it to charge. So like this feels like a very large obstacle. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, <see. laughs> well, that's the, I mean, the simulation yeah. of, of all of the different things that you have to simulate. I think there's a lot more that maybe a general focus group of humans is not going to come up with. So yeah. this is one of those things where you can use those AI capabilities to run predictive models on the environmental impact on the conditions that might come up under those real world, real world conditions. I think that's a, a great case for using some of the AI for the, the field testing here. Yeah. Yep. I love it. He's in there. AI. Welcome <laughs> to my world. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, Andrew, question for you. Great power comes with great responsibility. What what movie is that from? Oh, that's unfair. <laughs> that's what I thought. All right. <laughs> <laughs>